Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I want to review a fig for you guys today. Something that's really been wowing me. Um, we're in the greenhouse. These are the, the trees in here that have that really need a, a head start, but also need a, to finish off the season in the greenhouse. They just require a very long season and they're trees with a very significant crop on them. Um, the majority of my trees though are done. Yeah, you just have some varieties here guys like Black Madeira and and Cendrosa and Fico Rubato and um, you know Bavera Branca, things that just, or even a tree that didn't get off to the right footing this year and I wanted to really see what the fruit looked like. This variety though that I wanna show you guys is called Dell's Ermitons. And Dell's Ermitons, believe it or not, it may not be as late as I think it is. Um, you can see it down there, it's quite a productive variety. And the reason why I don't think it is as late as I, as it at least perceives to be is that this tree actually didn't get a head start. This tree woke up naturally with the rest of my other trees that were in the greenhouse. So this one woke up roughly a month later than let's say this guy right here. This is my GM 175. You can see how many fruits are on this thing that haven't ripened. I maybe got one or two figs off of here. This thing not only woke up a month earlier, but it also got an inordinate, just a crazy amount of heat in that month. Um, you know, whereas this thing is more natural and, you know, it just, it didn't have that crazy heater that we normally have on in the greenhouse blasting everything. And as a result, I don't know if I could really say that this is a super late variety. I will say, however, that this is definitely somewhere on the later side. Um, you know, I will also, it's hard to really say because this tree, I didn't even think I was gonna have this tree as of the spring. I didn't even think that this tree was gonna be mine. Um, as an example, what I'm trying to get at here is that this variety, we had basically bud grafted this. That's the bud graft right down there. Um, where that new shoot is coming at basically right in sorry guys like right in here is where that bud came out and this bud this tree was nothing but that bud um, in the beginning of the spring and I what I normally like to do is that I'll do my grafting at different times of the year we'll have grafts that go on in the spring if those fail I'll just keep grafting until I succeed and I'll even put on some grafts at the very end of the season because sometimes, and, and this is a perfect example, is that you get a graft and it takes at the very end of the season, but it doesn't grow, but it still took, the graft took. And then what ends up happening the following year is that the tree goes dormant and it wakes up in a natural way as these trees do, and it sends out shoots. And it's more likely to send out shoots in weird areas and weird directions. So if you have a graft and you know it took, it just may take some time for the graft to actually grow. As unfortunate as that is. And it got through, you know, the fall last year, the winter last year, and then the beginning of the spring and put out new growth. And I then realized, oh my God, I now have this variety. It's called Dell's Ermitons. And it comes from ponds in Spain um you know from his collection you can read about it in his books or on his website i think it's a real special a really tasty variety guys and it doesn't seem to need too much of a hang time which i find to be really awesome and it has you know a little bit of splitting down here at the bottom but i don't think this is going to be very characteristic we just have had some pretty good rain some pretty good humidity here in this climate and all that rain created a, a very humid environment in this greenhouse. And every, of course, I have the window shut and I have the door shut at all times to keep as much heat in. Um, it's just been very humid in here combined with all these leaves, right? These leaves are giving off humidity. So the humidity is trapped and it's growing in a very humid environment. However, a few days ago I had one of these and it wasn't as humid because I recently just added more trees in here um, but this one is splitting with this excess humidity however if you read Ponza's book 
Um, and you look at this variety, even on his website, you'll see that he mentions that it is indeed rain resistant and split resistant. And for a late fig, that is like very, very important um, for me. You know, this is something that I really, really value here. If it's gonna be a late variety, um, it just has to be rain resistant because I'm not really gonna wanna have many trees in the greenhouse. Like, you know, this is probably my limit, right? So in most situations, if it's not gonna be able to ripen outside, which it actually seemingly was doing, it was ripening, at, ripening outside without the help of this excess heat in the greenhouse. Um, and I was actually really enjoying it. I'm gonna just put the camera down for a second while I cut this open. It's kind of difficult to do. We got a little bit of sap, so I'm gonna try to avoid that sap on the knife. Okay. And the camera doesn't wanna focus, but there we are. This is extremely, extremely syrupy, guys. This is incredible. Um, in fact, I have never really seen this amount of honey in person like this. This amount of fig, fig nectar, fig, fig syrup, whatever you want to call it, fig honey. First off, it's crazy how much is pooling up in here, kind of like a black Madeira, but if the eye there's like a channel of honey that I've seen actually on the first one I had and to see if the fig was ripe, it was dripping honey and what I did was I squeezed the bottom to see if it was ripe and I'm not kidding, there was honey like pouring out of it, like it was like this was a bottle of honey and you were squeezing a bottle of honey. So I'm really impressed with this. Let's try it and see if the flavor is as good as the first one. Yeah. Yep. Great berry flavor. Lots of honey. Nice and sweet. It kind of reminds me exactly of a black Madeira. It's pretty darn close. Except it's green. It's got different characteristics. It should be I would say around the same time, but maybe even earlier, maybe even earlier ripening than a black Madeira. Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, and it should be split resistant, according to Pons. And everything I've read so far in Pons' book has been accurate. Like, the man hasn't really made a mistake. And I was kind of thinking that, oh, maybe I'll try this and I'll have different results here. Well, he's been pretty spot on. Everything that's sort of happened in the book you know, other than maybe ripening dates, has pretty much been correct. And uh, this is just something here that I think is real special, guys. Again, this fig is called Dell's Ermitons. Um, it is wonderful. So I, I really recommend it. I also think it has a really short hang time. Um, about the same amount of time, I would say, as maybe a black Madeira, in that it takes about six or seven days before, you know, a black Madeira is perfectly ripe. You know, as an example, this is, you know, it, this fig here was green yesterday, so it goes from green to purple, and then it gets softer and bigger and starts to swell. It takes about six or seven days from this green stage here, and this is day one, for it to be right and i think dell's ermitons is the same thing it doesn't even have to be perfectly right this one's a little bit actually under right um it could go on the day on the tree for like another few days and i'm interested to see how long i can really get it to hang on the tree because i got plenty more um yeah i'm just impressed with the flavor it's really good and uh, i think more people should think about this one Instead of thinking about just the most ridiculous varieties that exist, it's just it's crazy how some people prioritize their thoughts on specific things. Um, 
But yeah, that's Dell's Hermitons, guys. I um, hope you enjoyed this video, all right? If you enjoyed these videos and you wanna see more of the tastings that we do, just check out the playlist that we create. We created a playlist that has all the tastings that I've done for years. Um, so check that out, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, everyone.